Hunter Biden's lawyers are playing coy. They're responding to the judge's request for a response. She said, you know, there's been a lot of shenanigans in my courtroom and I'd like some clarity on this whole thing. And so while the government submitted a motion to dismiss one of Hunter's cases, the judge ordered Hunter's defense team to respond and they have now done that. They're agreeing to dismiss the charge, but not for the same reason that the government agrees. They're basically still staying hard to this line that there is immunity and that this court is now done. So we'll read it. We've got the White House responding to this along with our friends, Kevin McCarthy, Byron Donalds, and of course, James Comer, all reacting to David Weiss. And we're going to see if they do something about it because these are three people all in the House of Representatives, which the Republicans control, by the way. We'll see if anything gets done or if they're just going to keep giving us sound bites for the next few years. But this is what the response looks like from Hunter's lawyers. For foundation, we know that there was a plea deal and diversion agreement that both got botched. Hunter's people say that the diversion agreement is in full force and effect and Hunter has immunity. The government decided that they needed to dismiss the other tax charges and refile them in a different venue because we're currently in Delaware and the actual crimes occurred somewhere else. So they filed a motion to dismiss and Hunter's lawyers were ordered to respond to this. Here's what they say. Two pages out of the District of Delaware. The case is U.S. of America versus Robert Hunter Biden in this so-called prosecution. This is Hunter's response to the United States motion to dismiss for lack of venue. The government wants to dismiss the charges. They promise, promise, promise they're going to file it in another location. And defense has already responded, but the judge ordered them to respond again. Now, look at this. Christopher Clark is the person who was doing the original filings. He was the guy who argued the plea deal and the guy who's been sending all the letters. But he also submitted a motion to withdraw because he's now going to be a witness when they try to hold this immunity deal in place. So the new lawyer who has just come on is Abe David Lowell. We've heard from him before. He's the person who's now drafting this very short filing. They say, defendant Robert Hunter Biden, by and through his counsel, his lawyer Abe, respectfully submits this response that government already asked for a motion to dismiss for lack of venue. They say we're in Delaware got to be in a different court. Hunter's lawyers say, without adopting the government's reasoning, as venue for the existing information does not lie in this district, the information must be dismissed. Very coy. It just venue doesn't exist. So it's going to leave it up to the judge. It says, further, Hunter's position is that the enforceability of the diversion agreement has no bearing on the United States motion to dismiss for lack of venue. Any disputes regarding the effect of the diversion agreement are therefore not before the court at this time, right? So what he's doing is he's very clearly separating out the immunity issue from all of this. He said, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can dismiss for whatever you want. Dismiss for venue. Dismiss for your board. Dismiss because it's Hunter. Dismiss because there's an immunity. We have immunity. So it doesn't matter what you do. There's no bearing on anything that we're talking about. So they are going to stay hard and fast on this motion. And look at this, Latham and Watkins is back in the picture. Remember Latham and Watkins? Yeah, we talked about them a lot during the Michael Sussman saga. So they're back in the picture again. All right, so that is what Hunter's lawyers are doing. Now we asked Corrine about this. Hey, uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre, can you please uh, tell us what the White House has to say about this? Because you have now appointed a special counsel to investigate the president's son, even though you said many times we don't need a special counsel because David Weiss already has the authority and he's already an independent investigator who was appointed by Trump. Any comments now? I, I know your position on uh, yeah. on the special counsel, on the president's son, on any of those related issues, but I have picked up some frustration from some of the president's advisors that it ended up in a special counsel situation. What's your read? What is the president thinking right now? So first of all, Phil, we missed you in the briefing room. Congratulations Thank on you. your uh, <laughs> on moving to New York, my home city. Really excited for you. Get on Look, with it. You know, you know our position, as you just stated, as you were asking this question of me. We're going to be very clear here. We're going to be consistent, as we have been throughout the past two years. The Department of Justice is independent. We do not comment on any criminal investigation as it relates to uh, what's occurring with the former president, as it relates to uh, Hunter Biden. We've been very clear. We refer everyone to to uh, his representatives. The president loves his son. He is proud of how his son is rebuilding his life. He's and as far as anything specific about uh, any investigation, any criminal investigation, we just are going to be uh, consistent and just not common. I do want to ask you about the Inflation Reduction Act, about the turn one, I think, tomorrow. Um, yeah. the thing it's today, that, Phil. Is it today? It's today. It's, you know, yeah. the year just flew by. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Yeah, your Inflation Reduction Act that is not doing anything to inflation. Inflation is going down, really? Are our prices lower than they were? I don't think so. Inflation is not going up as fast, and they're doing victory laps because they're delusional. All right, so Kev McCarthy 
who has been in charge of the House of Representatives for a little while now, who really likes to talk a lot. I mean, this guy get, delivers sound bites like one day after another. They're, they're pretty good sound bites. Uh, here's one of them. We'll see if anything comes of it, but here's at least a sound bite for us. About the pay to play for the Bidens, we didn't know all of what transpired, but what do we know now? Now, having followed and pulled on the strings, we now know that the Biden family created 20 shell companies when Joe Biden became vice president. We know that the Biden family got 16 of the 17 payments from Romania while he was still vice president. The president told us he had nothing to do with the Biden family's workings. But now we found out to the partner just last week that, no, he literally called in. He had dinners. And after the dinners, the Biden family got a new Porsche. They got 3.5 million uh, wired to them. So. Things seem to be happening here. We also found out where President Biden told us that his family got no money from China. We now know that, yes, they did get money from China. We now know that the FBI, from one of their most prominent informants, was warned that they were told a number of years ago that they had to bribe Joe Biden. So this is just raises a lot of questions. We now know that uh, Attorney General Garland has said one thing in the investigation of Biden, but the IRS whistleblowers say something else happened. So what we're trying to find is, who lied and what are all the truths? Well, we hope you do something about it because a lot of people are lying and we're learning a lot more about the truth, but there need to be consequences for it, no? Well, here is what Byron Donald says about David Weiss. What's happening here is that Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice are in violation of their own protocols. Special counsels are supposed to come from outside the Department of Justice. Listen, David Weiss has been at this thing for three, four years now, and he comes up with this lame plea deal where they try to stick a FARA violation into it. Like, this is what's wrong. So putting him in charge is the wrong thing to do. If you're going to do a special counsel, they have to come from outside the Department of Justice. Like, where's where's John Durham? Yeah. Put him in charge of this thing. Yeah, how, how could you, how could, yeah, as a conservative, how that. could you have faith in this special counsel when... This man is the one who concocted the sweetheart deal as it related to the gun charge. Well, it's more than that. His office also didn't allow the IRS agents who have now gone on and whistleblown on in this situation. They didn't allow them to get location data on the famous WhatsApp text message of, I'm sitting with my dad, where's our money? We're never going to forget this stuff. They couldn't even do normal investigative processes under David Weiss. Now he's going to be the guy who's going to have all the power to bring Hunter Biden to justice. And by the way, any other American that didn't pay taxes like this, you would be in jail. They try to give him a, a misdemeanor slap and, on the wrist. And what do you say? Yeah, and a diversion that immunizes him from the more serious crimes. Literally structuring LLCs and transacting to hide money from the IRS, all while getting sports cars and stuff from foreign business people on the back of his daddy's quid pro quo phone call. So the whole thing is just one right after another. But we're asking ourselves, are you guys going to do anything about it? You're in Congress. Comer posted this on Twitter. He says, the selection of David Weiss as special counsel for the Biden investigation is an attempt to stonewall what Congress is doing. It's like, yes, we know. And it's going to take, what, years for them to come to a conclusion? And what's their conclusion going to be? Is David Weiss going to come to a different conclusion than the one he already did? He already signed off on a plea deal that had immunity built in. So what's he going to come up with now, a couple of years from now? Something different than that? Comer says the DOJ is now scrambling to run cover. Our investigation will not be deterred and we will continue to produce evidence. So, all right, sure hope exactly so. Exactly the box. We sure hope so, right. James. Well, this is another example of the Department of Justice stonewalling and obstructing our investigation. I've been complaining about this for months, but yet we continue to deliver evidence that shows of massive Biden wrongdoing and more evidence that shows Joe was right front and center in this from day one. What this does today, it protects David Weiss from coming in front of the committee, which is fine. This is an investigation about Joe Biden. I don't think we need any more evidence to show that the Department of Justice is trying to obstruct our investigation. I think Merrick Garland made that argument for us today. Yeah. We're going to continue to follow the money. We're going to continue to interview witnesses that we know have firsthand knowledge of what exactly the Bidens were doing to receive the millions and millions of dollars from bad actors in bad countries around the world and what role Joe played in this scheme. And that's what's important to every American, what role Joe played in this scheme, because we believe that we have a president of the United States that's compromised because of the millions and millions of dollars his family's taken in. Now, Congressman, um, Dana Bash over at CNN mentioned you today when discussing the Biden, Hunter Biden probe and the connections to Joe Biden himself. Watch. So far, 
There is no evidence. James Comer, the head yeah. of this committee, no just evidence. told uh, my colleague Jake Tapper <laughs> yesterday, pretty much admitted that they don't have evidence mm-hmm. pretty much to show that Joe Biden did anything wrong. <laughs> Congressman, your response to that? I pretty much didn't admit that. Yeah, uh, I yeah, pretty right. much admitted the evidence shows Joe Biden lied to the American people when he said he had never spoken to any of these people about uh, anything where Joe Biden was meeting with these people. We have emails, we have text messages, we have pictures, we have travel logs, we have travel records. We have sworn testimony from Devin Archer, who was front and center in a couple of these shell companies, that Joe Biden communicated with these people, in fact, communicated with every single person who wired to Biden millions and millions of dollars. He even had dinner on more than one occasion with these individuals, which we didn't know. So Joe Biden lied when he said his family never got money while he was vice president. He lied when he said his family never got money from China. And he lied when he said he never communicated with any of these crooks who were sending his family the millions and millions of dollars. So we've proven over and over again that Joe Biden lied. What I think the evidence shows is Joe Biden was front and center in this from day one. Devin Archer said... They constantly want to forget about all of that, though. They just think that we should only have direct deposits into Joe Biden's bank account. That's the evidence that they want. They want like a a check from Joe, you know, with his signature on it or something like that, which I don't think we're ever going to see. But they ignore all of this other evidence and they just say it doesn't exist. What they were doing, because we want no, what did they do to receive the millions of millions of dollars? Nothing. Devin Archer said fired they process. were selling the brand, yeah. and Con- the brand was Joe Biden. Con- Congressman, will you commit tonight to calling David Weiss to testify before Congress despite this appointment? Of course we will. We're not going to stop. This is just okay. another day in the office for us uh, leading this investigation of Biden corruption. They have obstructed every step of the way. They've intimidated our witnesses. Look, when Devin Archer was set to come in on Monday morning, the DOJ sent him a letter saying, Saturday and a letter again Sunday. That's never happened before. Never has the Department of Justice sent a letter on a weekend, and they send two on two separate Don't days dare for the sole purpose of intimidating him. They have intimidated every one of our witnesses. The Biden legal team, Abby Lowell and company, they have more than crossed the line of witness intimidation. Uh, you saw what the, what the legal team did in the Delaware court, trying to intimidate another person to take something off the website. There's example after yeah, example they, of question, obstruction. But Laura, yeah. we're going to continue to move forward I think, to this investigation. All right. So they're going to continue. And I think there is a lot there. They have probably just mounds of stuff that they're working through. I know I, I'm as frustrated as, as everybody that it feels like one side is taking major blows at the other side, while our side is just kind of like tap dancing and you know twiddling their thumbs, hanging out, waiting to get mowed over. But I think this is a slow process. We've got a lot of road ahead. Representative Comer seems like he's on it and he's continuing to dig. I think the truth will eventually be revealed. Hunter's lawyers are playing coy, but they got busted. And this whole thing deviated, which is why all of this is happening. It's very reactionary. They wanted to go squeeze this thing through and make it all go away. They failed. Now this is panic mode and we're seeing it. We're going to continue to cover it, my friends. Thank you for subscribing as we do. Thank you for inviting somebody to come over and join us as we hit these live streams. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.